when I got to the conference, these farmers were, they had, we had workshops, so they were like doing how to bag your corn flowers, to um, how to hand pollinate, and all these things that they were teaching. And then I noticed that they were all growing. One, uh, one farmer, she was growing this Byron corn. She was the one who showed us how to bag the flowers so we could grow more than one variety on your farm. And then there was uh, another farmer, he runs a um, songbird farm in Unity, Maine, and he, he, had, uh, he had been growing this corn. And he was selling the cornmeal, not the corn, but he would grind it. He had a, a stone mill and he would grind it and he'd sell it at the organic, um, at the organic uh, food store. So on my way home, I had dropped Neil off at the airport at, in uh, Portland, and on my way home, I stopped at a, uh, a local organic food store to see if I could find, find his corn. And they said, oh, you're a little late. <laughs> we get the shipment in, or he brings it in in October, and it's gone <laughs> in October. So, they were, what, what I was really, um, it was so heartwarming was that all these, uh, all these corn farmers, they were all non-native. And what they, they, their goal was to just bring back the heirloom corn. And so, long story short, I ended up, uh, I ended up getting a phone call from the farmer. Because I was heading back up to Canada after I dropped him off at the airport. And uh, I said, oh my God, I said, I'm so glad you called me. I said, because I've been sitting here trying to figure out how I was gonna find you. I said, but you know, when you're thinking like that, you're not thinking clearly. I'm like, Songbird Farm, come on, this is 2020, <laughs> right? Or 2019 at that time. Uh, everybody has a Facebook page, everybody has a website. And so I found him on, the, on a website as well. But he said, "Stop by." He said, "I'm. It's on your way home. Just stop by, and I'll give you some uh, give you some corn seeds." Well, he gave me more than seed. He gave me enough that I could eat, and then, of course, enough to grow as well and to share. Yeah, this thing. It doesn't seem to like cast iron for some reason. But they were saying that uh, the group that was growing the most flint corn in the state of Maine. You know who they are? Wasn't, no? Oh, uh, Somalians? Somalians, yes, yes, how did you know? Uh, I read a really good article about yes. how the communities had like reformed and started land cooperatives. Yes, wow. and, and they said that this corn here, this one right here, reminded them of the corn that they grew at home. So they're growing hundreds and hundreds of bushels of corn, our corn. <laughs> So we got to get with it, man. <laughs> we're behind. That was it. Next week will be longer because um, we're going to grind the corn and I'm going to show you how to do the niche to malization to turn this corn into the hominy corn. <laughs> yeah. I know. Like a big mill. They have them. I see, I see people have them in their yards as decorations or something. I'm like, what? Come on. <laughs> you should be using it. The native, the native corn mills, this is it. A lot of the corn you can actually, um, that's why I think the, the niche to malization makes so much sense. Uh, I didn't bring the metate today because it's more for next week when we do the um, hominy corn. But if you grind corn that's wet, it's way easier, right? Yeah, so we ground, um, last year we ground the corn while it's wet. And then uh, you can take that and you can dry it out. Yeah. And then you have flour, right? But to, uh, to grind it like this, I would think that you would need one, you'd need a bigger one. Probably a mortar and pestle that was made out of a log and different varieties of corn. Because this here was much easier to grind than this one. 
because this is a flower corn and that's a, a flint corn. They call it flint corn because it's hard as flint. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's terribly hard. So, yeah, I'm thinking about how you could get something going, maybe like on a flywheel, so you could process 50 pound bags. Mm. There's, there's corn, and there's also like nobody grows um, dried beans because to actually shell them is just such a, a pain. And yeah. We could be getting um, like pressed sunflower oil and all kinds of stuff, but people don't have the materials. and. A sunflower oil press, like bottom end, is like a hundred, about fifty bucks or something. Wow! Like it would be great to have something like, like the bee store. Yeah. Uh huh. Just, like it's a, it's five hundred dollars for the spinner, but you can get it for like, I don't know, something like five dollars a day tomorrow. Just rent it. Yeah. See, that would be great if we had like a cooperative, like a for farm cooperative where we could come and use things like that to share the uh, the tools because if you had if you had a stone mill the value of that corn meal there this here would go up just because it's stone ground when um, when I was down in South Carolina a couple of years ago we went to Myrtle Beach and we stopped in all these little little towns we bought a we bought cornmeal, but the cornmeal was in from a stone uh, mill. They were charging ten dollars for a, it was a, a one pound bag of cornmeal. Okay. Well, that's really good, <laughs> and because I bought, I didn't just buy one. I bought several. I was like, I'm going to take some and you know have enough for a few days anyway. It was before I had found, you know, this and I could grow it myself. But why not? If we had that, that would be awesome. And then you could then you could uh, market it as a stone. The only thing about the stone mill is that you can't guarantee gluten-free. And so people like, um, my, my son's girlfriend is uh, celiac, so um, like we can't just buy any kind of cornmeal. She can, she can eat this though because I'm, I'm only using it, using the mill for corn. Yeah. Yeah, but that would be really neat if we could get a cooperative. I can look and see if there's some brands that could have done more. Like if, if the Hayes farm were to have houses or like yeah. data is um, starting to cooperate now. Okay. I think that's the same. Oh really? Okay. Okay. Cool. See, we if we had a stone mill here, and then other farmers could come here and use it too. Yeah, we could put it right in the barn. Yeah. Mm -hmm. No, that would be fantastic. All right. Um, any ideas on corn businesses? <laughs> corn businesses. You could do these. Selling how many corn? Sell, well, you know, on the reserve you could. It's so freaking hard to find. If you, I tried it, okay? So this is what I tried. I, I niche tamalized it and I made the hominy. Yeah. And then I put it in a, I made pint sized jars and liter jars and I processed them. And I learned really quickly that the corn, it even puffs more once you put it in the pressure canner. Oh. Yeah, and you could sell it, and I did check with Health uh, Canada. You can sell it, but not through, not outside the reserve. But that's okay. Right. Yeah, it's, we're the ones who are always looking for it. Yeah, yeah. So you could sell it on the reserve. So you could sell it like it. St. Mary's grocery store, yeah. you could sell it at, uh, yeah, wherever, your gas bar, anywhere, so. They do sell, like, the pan omni corn at the They get it from tight, they get that from tight. Where, here? Yeah. Yeah. They actually sell the, they sell it as omni corn <laughs> at Scuba Save. Yeah. But it's, like, dried. Yeah. Like, not, like, not mixing lines or anything, it's for you to actually through the process. Oh, but they're calling it hominy? Yeah, funny enough. Yeah, it's not supposed to be hominy until after. Corn. Huh? It's a white corn. Yeah. 
Interesting. Um, yeah. hmm. That's the only place that I've been able to find it on this side of the border. Yeah, Somebody right? Else like this across. side of the border. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, no, I looked into that because I thought, yeah, that'd be a good business. I don't, I think it'd be a good, a good business for somebody who has the energy. Yeah. Yeah, I don't have the energy. <laughs> it's hard enough for you to make hominy for myself. <laughs> and then, yeah. Sorry. Now, the Onondaga nation in New York. Yep. I was going to stop there, but then the pandemic broke out. I was on my way back up from the south, and they sell uh, they sell corn flour like this stuff. Yeah. And it's really cool because their corn, they grow it like traditionally in the circles and the the whole community comes together and and uh, harvests it and they shuck the corn and everything all of it like old school uh, methods and they're selling their uh, the cornmeal and they sell out every year wow yeah so it's a good business just cornmeal I mean this is easy so you could sell this to non-natives because they would buy the cornmeal how would you how would you grow enough corn though in New Brunswick to produce, you know, enough to be able to sell without yeah. having it, you know, be cross-contaminated. I know, you'd have to have, you'd have to have a, a farm that had enough land, maybe an acre. I know that's what um, the guy who gave me these, he, he started with an acre, and then the second year that I knew him, he went up to five acres. But, like, would it get cross-contaminated with other corn? Like, um, they, Say this guy over here, Zach over here, is growing some corn. He's got, you know, um, I don't know, cream corn. It could, grow. it could, definitely. Grow this, but I want it just to be this. Wouldn't his like? It would, but the thing about it is, is that what you want to do is you want to set aside or isolate where you're, um, maybe bag a group of them, or maybe if you're doing rows, bag a row of them so that they don't get cross-pollinated and then you have your seed okay. and then the rest of it you're going to grind up or make hominy so it doesn't matter so just just bag up what you need for seed and then it wouldn't matter what zach grows zach can grow anything he wants <laughs> <laughs> i was thinking the exact same thing you did and i was considering like if you had something similar to like a hoop house like we have you have one designated area that's literally just for seed 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 coffee. corn yeah and that's it yeah, just bag, just bag a row, and then you've got yours covered, and the rest of them can get pollinated by Zach's corn, and it won't matter, because it'll only affect the next year, right, okay, when right. you plant it, yeah. Any other questions? Are we going to get into a business now? Yeah? <laughs> we need how many acres of corn? We could do corn nuts. Because every time I buy a bag of corn nuts, they're stale. You ever notice that? They're like stale and greasy. We could do them better. Yeah. Oh, sorry. I, was, I didn't realize you were listening. Oh. That, that, that could probably sell like really well at like a powwow or something. Like fresh little bag of corn nuts. Corn nuts? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that would be really good. There you go. See? You're getting ideas. Or fresh, uh, fresh uh, tortilla chips. Yeah, homemade Doritos. Homemade Doritos. We already got a name. Rosito's. They're all cool ranch. Cool ranch Rosito's. <laughs> Yeah, no, there's a lot of uh, corn corn ideas out there. Make a business out of them. That?